Hello all, I am Pooja Agarwala. I am going to here summarize the key findings of our study on early infantile, developmental and epileptic encephalopathy. In this study, we have looked at the etiologies, phenotypic differences and outcomes. Early infantile, developmental and epileptic encephalopathy is a severe form of epilepsy where we see seizure onset before 3 months of age. It can be due to various etiologies, the most common being the genetic, malformative and the metabolic causes. Various literature have been done on this topic, but it has focused mainly on genetic only causes. Not much literature is known about malformative and metabolic causes. Hence, in this study, we tried to prospectively investigate various causes in EID EE patients. We have also tried to understand the phenotypic differences between them and we have also compared long term outcome for seizure control. Our study was done in a tertiary care center in North India. In this study, we have recruited prospectively and then followed up babies with EIDEE over a 6 years period. Out of the total 88 eligible patient, 80 babies were recruited due to various reasons and 77 of them underwent genetic evaluation. Before 2019, we did a stepwise approach and started with a clinical exome panel. If normal, we did singleton or a trioexome sequencing. But since 2019, we did directly a single turn or a trio exome sequencing. And if this next generation sequencing was normal, we did a microarray test. In two of the babies diagnosed to have tuberous sclerosis, we directly did a TSC1 and a TSC2 gene sequencing. And in two babies thought to have lesencephaly, we did a microarray test. And if that was normal, we did a single turn or a trio exome sequencing. On looking at the etiologies, we found out of the total 80 patients, a cause could be identified in 83% of the babies. The most common etiological group was genetic only, compromising 50% of the patient. STXBP1 gene was found to be the most common gene. We had also compared the phenotypic differences between the etiological groups. So, when we looked at the seizure onset, we saw that majority of the patient in the vitamin responsive group presented within the first 7 days of life, while the genetic and the unknown group presented after the 7 days of life. On looking at the seizure type, we could see that all of the patient in the vitamin responsive group and majority of the babies in the structural group had clonic seizures, while the genetic and the unknown group, the most common type was tonic seizures. When we looked at the severity of the developmental delay, it was more common in the genetic and the unknown group. Similar finding was seen when comparing the autistic trait which was more common in the genetic group. On looking at the tone of normalities, it was less commonly seen in the vitamin responsive group, while the movement disorder was less commonly seen in both the structural and the vitamin responsive group. On looking at the seizure control, we could see that the best seizure control was in the vitamin responsive group. Now, looking at the kaplan meier graph, we could see that median time for seizure control in the vitamin responsive group was 3 days while in the genetic group it was 3 months. On looking at age at genetic diagnosis and time to genetic diagnosis from the first visit, we could see that there was a significant time lag in 2016 when compared 6 years later in 2022. To conclude, we could find a cause in 83% of our patients and 
single gene disorder was the most common underlying cause of EID EE. We also found that in the genetic and the unknown group, there was significant neurodevelopmental issue with the poor seizure control, while in the vitamin responsive group, especially if treated early, there was a good seizure control with milder neurodevelopmental issue. Thank you.